Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage your host for this evening, Mr. Shali Kumar. Good evening. Namaste. Namaskaram. Sasriya Kaal. I am Shalab Kumar. My Janam Bhoomi is Bharat, India. And my Karam Bhoomi is the United States of America. Meaning, my motherland is India and my work land is USA. I want to tell you my story. I was born in a small town in Punjab called Ambala. My mother, Satyavati, and her family were freedom fighters from a lower middle class family. They fought for a free and independent India and fought for the right to determine their own destiny. Where you end up in life should not be about which family you were born into or what the government thinks you can achieve, but about your own initiative to live out your own dreams. When I was 20 years old, I moved to America with an engineering degree and a dream. Within next six years, I founded ABG Group, which today is a multinational company with 20 plus patents and worldwide operations. See, I'm an inventor. This was my dream, and the reason I came to America, that was the reason I came to America. I did not want a government handout or a special program. I wanted to build something with my own hard work and initiative that would usher new technologies. Folks, let me tell you that I also was a Democrat once. I grew up admiring JFK. His pictures used to be plastered all over town as the most handsome uh, president of the United States ever. But then after a chance meeting with candidate Governor Ronald Reagan in 1979, my life changed. He convinced me that my values were conservative and I became perhaps the first Republican Indian American in the country. Reagan inspired me. He spoke in bold, bright terms about winning the Cold War, expanding freedom and opportunity for all, and restoring America as the shining city on the hill which the whole world will look up to, it stirred a passion in me for politics because I wanted to preserve the ideals that drew me to America in the first place. And I wanted to fight for the country that enabled me to have such a great opportunity. A few years later, I got to know Newt Gingrich, and our friendship has lasted almost three decades. We spent hours discussing ideas and policies, and he is someone who thinks in big revolutionary terms. He later became Speaker of the House, and when he ran for president in 2012, I was proud to chair his campaign in Scott County, Iowa, with the best results in Iowa, I should add. Conservative values are Hindu values, 
as well. And I am proud to be a Hindu. I will repeat it again. I am proud to be a Hindu. I am proud to be a Hindu American. We are, we are the culture that gave the number zero to the world. We gave decimal point to the world. We gave astronomy to the world. We gave surgery to the world. We are a peace-loving people who believe that every person has an eternal spirit which should be in harmony with nature. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest speaker, Mr. Donald J. Trump, in his statement a few weeks ago, announcing his presence at tonight's event, declared, mark these words, declared that Hindus have made a fantastic contribution to world civilization and American culture. This is the first time in history that a major presidential candidate has addressed the Indian and Hindu communities just three weeks before the general election. That is putting our place on the policy-making tables of the United States. Think of the values of conservative movement, and you will see that they are all Hindu values as well. Free enterprise with limited and smaller government is the same, by the way, the uh, policies adopted by none other than our India's dear Prime Minister Modi, who fought the election with small, limited government. Second, fiscal discipline. That is, we need to run the government just like we run our families. We do not spend more than what we take in. Third, family values. That is the third F in our policy that we should have a family value legislation that encourages families together rather than breaking up families like sometimes government makes policy that encourage breakup of families like marriage penalty, et cetera, et cetera, and also single mothers and so forth. Lastly, the most important one, because economic security is good, but if you do not have real physical security, what are we going to do? So the fourth element is firm foreign policy. I urge my fellow Hindus to think about these values and our values and ask yourselves, who truly represents you in Washington? Is it a president who celebrates Diwali in White House and next day wants to give eight nuclear capable F-16 worth $658 million to Pakistan? Or is it the party that wants to cut aid to Pakistan, declare them a terrorist state, and prevent them from acquiring nuclear-capable F-16s. Which policymakers in Washington want to keep the status quo on immigration? And which want to help Indians obtain green cards faster? So that highly skilled workers don't have to wait 50 years or more just because they're from India. And I believe that Hindus should have a powerful voice in American politics. That is why after visiting the Republican Jewish Coalition with my good friend Nick Muzzin and seeing how the Jewish people, even though they are smaller in number, are able to multiply their impact by being unified and well-organized. 
At that point, I decided to found the Republican Hindu Coalition. We too make up a small percentage of the population, but our success in American life is far out of proportion to our numbers. We have the highest rates of income, highest per capita income of all ethnic groups. We have the highest percentage of college graduates. Some 67% have a bachelor's degree. More than 50% have a master's and advanced degree. Also, like the Jewish people, we understand the threats of radical Islam. It is not a distant threat to us. It is not a distant threat to us. It affects our relatives back home every single day. If you go to Delhi, you'll see the malls all locked down. What a kind of a feeling you have when you're going to a mall and you have so much police security. I believe that our strength will be multiplied if we become if we come together, united as Hindus and Americans, rather than divided by language and state and family background. We have made great contributions to America as individuals and communities, but now it is time to contribute to the political life of the country in a big way as Hindus. And I want my children and their children to be proud to be Hindus as well as, as well. We have a beautiful, rich, and vibrant culture, and we need to celebrate being Hindus and being Americans. We need to work to preserve the American dream for the next generation. My friends, the 21st century must be Indo-American century. And the Republican Hindu Coalition will be at the forefront of these efforts, working on Capitol Hill as a united voice of Hindu Americans to advance these goals. In India, we now have a new Prime Minister, Narendra Modi, who understands that conservative values are what creates freedom and opportunity for all these people. And wouldn't it be great if we had a leader in America who shared those values? Together, we could expand trade, coming as a check on China, and partnering against radical Islam. When I met Donald Trump a few months ago, we had a long conversation. We told him his love of the Hindu and Indian people based on his experience doing business in India. We talked about family and commerce, about America's role in the world. And I decided to invite him to speak tonight because I know he'll, you, he'll do wonders for U.S.-India relationship. And as Mr. Trump, as I promised you that day in July, I stand at your side and together we will ensure that the U.S. stands shoulder to shoulder with India. So please welcome my dear friend and a great leader for our country and the world, Mr. Donald J. Trump.